What's going on guys? Welcome back to the Owner's Box YouTube channel. Today, my last Dynasty video of the off season. This will be strictly a season long redraft channel, which I'm very excited for. We have a calendar up in the office or a timer up in the office. We're inside 100 days to the NFL season, so it's time to get you ready for your season long drafts. But join our Discord if you want to talk some more Dynasty. We're doing that each and every day there. Uh, the link to the, dis the Discord channel will be down below in the description. But today, three players that I think are, are sleepers in terms of their ADP currently in Dynasty Leagues if you're drafting right now, or even if you already have a team, these are guys that you can be looking for as trade targets that won't require uh, a lot you'll need to give up in terms of value. Let's not waste any more time. Let's get into the players. First up is Mr. Josh Palmer of the Los Angeles Chargers, the wide receiver, 22 years old, came out of the draft in 2020. Um, the Chargers have a really good situation for him. Look, unfortunately, the... Uh, re-signing of Mike Williams doesn't help his capital in terms of, you know, when he can make a move on this offense, but this wide receiver room is not getting any younger. And I'm really surprised the Chargers didn't make an investment in the draft and didn't make one in free agency. We have a 30-year-old Keenan Allen. We have a 27-year-old Mike Williams. We've got Jalen Guyton in at that third wide receiver spot. He's 24, uh, but he really profiles as that field stretcher. He's got good speed. They don't really use him in any other situations other than that. When you got an arm like Justin Herbert, you do need someone to stretch the field, stretch the offense, or sorry, stretch the defense. Guyton is that guy. So I don't see Palmer taking over his role, but Palmer still had a pretty decent rookie season. He had over 350 yards. He had four touchdowns. He made some plays and on a team with two players, Keenan Allen hasn't had much injury history recently, the last couple of years, but early in his career, it was a problem. 30 years old, not getting any younger, right? Mike Williams though, well-documented. The injury history is there. The way he plays football, his body has been beaten and bruised. So any injury to any of these two guys or really any of these three, there is going to be a role immediately for Josh Palmer. He's not a speedy, super athletic profile, but very crafty route runner, high football IQ. He's gotten the chance to work with Keenan Allen, probably the best route runner in football uh, these, this past season. Honestly, Palmer is someone I'm excited about considering the Chargers have no depth at the position, none. We're talking about Jason Moore, who <laughs> has been with the organization for like three, four years in the practice squad. Um, I can't even, DeAndre Carter they signed, but he's playing more of a special teams role. This team is one injury away from Josh Palmer being a legitimate fantasy asset. So I would be looking to go get him. His ADP right now is like 201, so very easy to go acquire him. Definitely Josh Palmer is someone I'm drafting late, or if I can, I'm targeting in my dynasty leagues that uh, have already been drafted. Second guy here, a quarterback. You're seeing it on the screen. Here I am to make you feel incredibly uncomfortable, and I'm welcoming the haters here. It is Daniel Jones, quarterback for the New York Giants. Look, the capital on Daniel Jones is at... For me, it's it's probably not an all-time low. That was probably before this year with Joe Judge as head coach, but it's low. Um, right now, going around 140 in ADP, the, around the likes of like Matt Ryan, Carson Wentz, for a guy that has a decent rushing profile, has posted a 400-yard rushing season in his career, this is not the type of player that should be surrounded by a guy like Matt Ryan who doesn't have many years left and a guy like Carson Wentz that in this stage in his career, I, I just don't see any upside. The guy's bound to be losing his starting role. You could be saying the same to me about Daniel Jones because obviously the Giants didn't pick up his fifth-year option. To me, that's not a problem though because the capital that I can invest in DJ is small. Like I, I don't have to worry about him needing to be uh, the QB1 or in some most situations in two quarterback leagues, I might not even need him to be my QB two. I can draft him where he's going right now. He could be my quarterback three, and I would be ecstatic with that. Brian Dable coming in as head coach. Last year was a complete and utter disaster under Joe Judge, as bad as it could get. But I do think there were some good things that Daniel Jones did last season. He cut down his turnover-worthy play percentage in half. There's rushing upside. And honestly, you, you'd be lying to me if you said you didn't think you saw even a little bit of Josh Allen and Daniel Jones. There's a rushing profile. He can run the football. Now, I'm not going to tell you that he can run guys over the way that Josh Allen can run guys over and run, run the ball into the goal line. But I, I really like Dable stepping in head coach. I really think he's going to help this offense a lot. A lot of progression. Again, Daniel Jones... I think there is talent there. There's certainly arm talent. And I'm excited about Kadarius Toney this season. You know, Kenny Galladay's back. Saquon Barkley is set to have, I think, a massive impact in the receiving game for this team too. Take a chance on Daniel Jones. Sure, this could be one season with him, 
but I think it's going to be more. I think he's going to surprise us in 2022. So uh, definitely look to draft him late if you are in a dynasty startup, but nonetheless, a cheap trade target for you with some upside. Last but not least, Donovan Peoples-Jones of the Cleveland Browns. If you are finding or trying to find a way to get in on the Browns offense with Deshaun Watson, eventually Deshaun Watson is going to be starting. I don't know when it is. Uh, something tells me if the Browns are willing to make that type of trade for him and give up that type of capital, it's not going to be very long, if any, that he's out. Now, I'm not going to speak on the morality of that, but in any case, DPJ, 23 years old, out of Michigan. Look, the draft capital wasn't there. Sixth round pick. With, with Amari Cooper coming into the offense, there is a guy in Cooper who is definitely going to fill a solid role there, probably most definitely going to get most of the volume in the passing offense. But it's a, it's a guy who's a little bit up there in age. So eventually this team will probably invest in the wide receiver position through the draft. But for now, there's a chance for DPJ to have a good role in this offense, a guy who runs pretty much all of his routes from outside. As a result, I'm going through my numbers here. He was 14.7 yards um, in terms of average depth of target. That was, what, fourth in the NFL last season. His yard, average yards per reception, 17.6 yards. That was third overall. So this is a big play guy waiting to happen. Who does this remind you of? A guy that has played with Deshaun Watson in Houston? If you didn't say it already, Will Fuller is who I think about. This is a big play guy with an opportunity with his, his athletic profile to make some big plays for Deshaun Watson. Deshaun Watson, third in average depth of target in 2020. Or sorry, yeah, 2020. And he was also sixth, sixth in adjusted completion percentage of passes of 20 plus yards. So this is a guy who can push the ball down the field, willing to do so, and can be accurate doing so. DBJ, I believe, what do I have as ADP? 182. So pretty deep into your dynasty drafts right now. He's someone I got to take a shot on because I do think that uh, in, in years past, we've seen it with Deshaun Watson. He's going to be able to support two wide receivers. Stefanski in this offense, I think, is going to be more than willing to uh, get the ball to DPJ considering what uh, it looked like last season, right around 77% of his routes outside. So go take a shot on Donovan Peoples-Jones because it's not going to take a high investment. And this is one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL whenever it is he, it is, he is on the field. But again, don't get too crazy because sixth round draft capital is nothing uh, that this team can't replace, but worth a shot in any case. So go get DPJ. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Like I said, more redraft content. I'm probably gonna have some rankings out soon. Uh, the full breakdown on these three guys is on the owner's box blog. That link is down below in the description. Like the video if you enjoyed. Comment down below if you hate these guys, you think these guys stink. Let me know that you, uh, what do you think about Daniel Jones? Because I actually, I really do think there's a chance for him to have a, a big year in 2022. Uh, but anyways, thank you guys for watching and we'll see you next time.